Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Hey guys, we're your hosts, M and J, and today we wanted to talk about Avengers Endgame. Just a heads up, this video will be discussing spoilers. This movie was 10 years in the making, so the question is, did it deliver? In our opinion, yes it did, but with an asterisk. We have no idea if this is a controversial opinion or not, but we might as well get it out of the way. We didn't think this movie needed to be three hours long. We honestly did feel that runtime. There was a surprising amount of humor in the first hour of the movie. I figured it was going to be pretty somber to match the tone of the snap and then become more hopeful in the second half of the movie. It definitely did have that tone, like when Scott Lang finally made it out of the quantum realm or seeing what happened to Hawkeye after watching his family disappear in front of him. But there were some comedic scenes that we felt overstayed their welcome. For example, when they meet up with the Hulk again, there ends up being a comedic bit between him, Ant-Man, and a couple of fans of the Hulk. They want to get the Hulk's picture, but they're not interested in Ant-Man's picture. He gets kind of offended by this, and it becomes this whole thing. It was an alright moment, but we felt like it could have been cut down a bit without losing the comedic impact. There are several scenes that kind of play out like this. The comedy would be fine if it just didn't stay for as long as it did, and it would have helped with the runtime, as well as the pacing. But I'd say that was our biggest complaint about this movie. Some people might have been fine with the humor, Humor, so this might have been more of a personal gripe for us. It's totally fine if you liked it, we just found it a bit distracting. Plus, we weren't really in the mood to laugh after Infinity War. But moving on to the story, everyone's dealing with the aftermath of Infinity War. With half the population gone, the world's been thrown into chaos. Thanos says in this movie that everything he's done was never personal, which explains his actions. He doesn't see people as individuals, he sees them as a collective group. He believes that the group would do better with half of them gone because there would be more resources to go around. But his actions actually hurt society because he doesn't understand that every individual has their own place and role and identity within that society. For example, Wakanda lost their king not long after they lost T'Chaka. And they were kind of in the middle of starting this new era where they were gonna open their borders. And they can still try to work on that path, but losing half of their population and their king is really going to cause a huge toll on them. Hawkeye's family might not have any government positions, but their loss damaged Hawkeye, and that damage was much greater than any good that some extra resources might bring to Hawkeye. The same goes for the rest of the world. Governments have to try to pick up the pieces, and the people have to pick up the pieces of their own individual lives. It's too much of an extreme measure. Thanos made for a good villain, and I think he was a strong point in this movie. He was strong in his beliefs, and he was motivated to get what he wanted, and he made a good foil for the heroes. The movie did a lot for Tony's character. He has parallels to Thanos in certain ways in that they both have plans for the future, but very different plans. Five years ends up passing after the snap because Thanos used the stones to destroy them in an attempt to make sure that his work couldn't be undone. And in that time, Tony settled down with Pepper and ended up having a family. They acknowledge how lucky they were because both of them were able to stay while others weren't so lucky. So he ends up facing a personal dilemma when the possibility arises to undo the snap, and possibly the last five years. He struggles with it because he's afraid of losing his daughter, but he's able to find a solution for himself and the rest of the world by finding a way to bring everyone back, but also not undoing the last five years. I think this says a lot about his character, from his ability to problem solve, to the fact that he's a team player, even though he initially turned down their offer. Although I do think keeping the five-year gap would lead to some interesting problems. Like imagine if your older sibling disappeared and you stayed only to continue aging five years and when that person came back, you would now be the older sibling. It's kind of crazy when you think about it. I really liked Nebula in this movie. It was great seeing how far she's come since the first Guardians of the Galaxy and how she's really grown as a character. She's much more of a team player. She actually felt like the heart of the movie. She has the greatest connection with Thanos being his his daughter, but being abused by him and tortured by him, and how she spent so long trying to gain his affection, but realizing that that was just never gonna happen, and how she was able to move on from that, and finding a new family. I liked seeing her younger self and how different they actually were from each other, and it really cemented that she's not who she used to be. I really liked seeing her reaching out to Gamora and try to be sisters with her, and I liked her interactions with War Machine. They went back in time 
time to get one of the stones together. She talks to him about how she wasn't always a cyborg, and he says that he wasn't always like this either, but they have to work with what they've got. It was nice that they got to share that moment. And I liked her interactions with Tony when they were stranded in space. How she was thinking about his needs, and how he might need food a little bit more than she does, and how they were trying to make the best of a bad situation. Then there's Ant-Man. He basically ends up being the catalyst for the plot after the Avengers find out that Thanos destroyed the Infinity Stones. In a way, Endgame is almost like a sequel to Ant-Man and the Wasp, along with Infinity War. But Scott was in the quantum realm when the snap happened, and by the time he got out of there, the five years had passed. But to him, it had only been five hours. So he figures out they can use the quantum realm to time travel. With Tony's help, they're able to perfect the technology and go back in time to get the Infinity Stones before they were destroyed. Ant-Man was really important because he provided the pin particles that allowed them all to time travel. He was also comedic without being distracting, and seeing him reunite with his daughter after escaping the quantum realm was a really touching moment. He was a really enjoyable character, and he provided the hope that the Avengers desperately needed. It was really sad to see what had become of Thor. They thought they had hope after they found Thanos when he used the stones again, only to find out it was too late. He destroyed the stones using their own power. Thor finally had the chance to go for the head, but by then it was too late. And he clearly carried that guilt with him. And the way it manifested was rather comedic, but very depressing. Thor's gone through a lot during the MCU, and failing to stop Thanos was just the straw that broke the camel's back. He's trying his best to ignore the pain, but it just won't go away. He ends up letting himself go, and he's just a shadow of his former self. I really like how he got to talk to his mom when they went back in time. I like how she recognized that he was from the future, and that clearly the future had not been kind to him, and it was great to see them have this moment. It's interesting that he went back in time with Rocket, and then at the end of the movie he ends up joining the Guardians of the Galaxy. It kind of feels like he still hasn't been able to move on, like he's still kind of finding himself. So maybe some adventures in space would do him some good. It did feel like he kind of just dropped new Asgard on Valkyrie though. He decides to go into space, he tells Valkyrie she's queen now. She doesn't even believe him at first, but it almost feels like he's still trying to run from his responsibilities. So he hands his kingdom over to somebody else, while he goes off and has space adventures with a couple of goofballs. I do hope he's able to work out his struggles. As for the Hulk, this was a very unique portrayal of him. Bruce has managed to make peace with the Hulk, and spends most of the movie in this hybrid form between the two personalities. He's pretty mild-mannered now, and he doesn't really get a lot of good fight scenes. I kind of miss Hulk raging out considering the fact that that would lead to some great comedy and action, but I am glad that he was able to work through his issues. It also would have been nice to see that character development for ourselves. To be honest, that probably could have been a whole movie by itself. He's way more Bruce Banner than the Hulk now, and it was almost like the Hulk wasn't really present in the movie. He also got off pretty easy when he went to get his Infinity Stone. He just had to convince the Sorcerer Supreme to give him the Time Stone. For example, Natasha and what she had to do to get her Infinity Stone. We really liked Black Widow in this movie, and Scarlett Johansson did a great job. I like how she was clearly suffering, but she was still trying her best to pick up as many pieces as she could. I like how she was available for all the remaining Avengers to be able to talk to her from wherever it was that they were, whether that was off-world or whether that was somewhere on Earth. I liked how when she found out that there was a possibility to change things, she jumped into it. And I liked how she was confident that they would succeed, like when they were getting ready to go back in time. She said, see you guys in a minute, which suggested that she was confident that they would all be successful in their mission. So it was really awful to see what she had to do to get hers. I'm not sure why she and Hawkeye specifically went after the Soul Stone. I don't think they had any particular connection to it. And it kind of makes you wonder what would have happened if anyone else had gone after the Stone. The Soul Stone can only be obtained by trading a loved soul. So watching her and Clint have to figure out what they're going to do, and if this is a trick or not, and then how they were trying to sacrifice themselves, and they kept trying to stop each other, and it was just so sad, and Clint said that he should do it because look at what he's become, but also he's been doing this because he wants his family back, and if they come back and he's not there, that would be a tragedy, so like there's just no win situation here. Black Widow was so hopeful, and she was on board with the plan from the beginning, and she deserved to be able to be there at the 
end after it was over when they all won. And I know it was a heroic sacrifice, but that doesn't mean I have to like it. Time travel can be really tricky because it can lead to a lot of plot holes and paradoxes. You probably noticed that we haven't talked about Captain America yet, but we figured we'd talk about him when we were talking about the time travel aspect of the movie. We feel it was introduced well and wasn't just a convenient option to service the plot. And it did feel believable for the most part, but it's not without its issues too. There are some fun moments like when Captain America ends up fighting himself when they go back in time to get the Tesseract from the first Avengers movie, and past Captain America mistakes future Captain America for Loki in disguise. But then through a series of events, past Thanos, Gamora, and Nebula come to the future to fight the Avengers, and then Nebula ends up killing her past self. How are there no consequences to that? Then by the end of the movie, Captain America goes back in time to return the Infinity Stones to their rightful places, but instead of returning to the present as planned, he goes back in time to live his life out with Peggy Carter and meets up with the Avengers as an old man. While I'm happy for him on one hand, Peggy had children. Also, he basically abandoned Bucky along with the rest of the Avengers, but it honestly felt like he just forgot about Bucky. In the end, he passes his shield on to Sam Wilson, making him the new Captain America like he is in the comic books. I wouldn't really mind it if I didn't feel like he hadn't just blown off Bucky. Sam is a hero in his own right under the identity of Falcon, but Bucky suffered a lot as the Winter Soldier, and now he doesn't really have his own identity. It was just kind of a disappointing send-off after seeing everything the two of them had been through. He could have taken Bucky into the past with him, but instead he left him in the present. I just wish we had gotten a better send-off for these two. Not to mention they don't address any kind of potential paradoxes with Captain America going back in time and marrying Peggy Carter, changing the timeline. Plus, Red Skull is the keeper of the Soul Stone, so it would have been really interesting to see Captain America and Red Skull come face to face again, but the movie didn't address it at all. But aside from the time travel stuff, Captain America was really good in this movie. It was really cool to see him wielding Thor's hammer. We all knew he could, and it was nice to see Thor actually happy for him. He seemed a little concerned about that all the way back in Age of Ultron, but I guess he's moved past that. But he was right there with Natasha when Ant-Man showed up and started suggesting time travel, and he was there through every step of the way, including trying to convince Tony to come back on board. So he definitely did a lot of legwork, and he deserves credit for that. I'm also a little confused how they were able to take things like Mjolnir into the future without that having a big effect on the time stream. They did the same thing with Gamora, and I'm actually really glad to see her back, but I'm kind of curious if that does have any effect on the time stream at all or not. I guess there's just no consequences to this. Which means that we might actually be able to get characters like Black Widow back, which I would be fine with. There is a Black Widow movie coming, so unless that movie takes place in the past, this is definitely an option. The final battle was definitely worth the wait. It was great seeing Doctor Strange teleport everybody to the battlefield for one last stand against Thanos. It's the most superheroes we've seen on screen so far, and it definitely felt epic. One of the best moments was Wanda confronting Thanos, especially since the MCU hasn't really given her the opportunity to use her full powers like she can in the comics, and this was definitely the farthest she's ever gone. It was a great moment. You could really feel Thanos' desperation, to the point where he ordered the ships to fire on the battlefield despite his troops being present. He really deserved this after everything he's done. And then Captain Marvel comes in and destroys his ship. I guess Doctor Strange didn't know about her and that's why she came in late? I'm gonna be honest, I kind of forgot about Captain Marvel. I mean, it had been about two hours since the last time we saw her, and a lot happened in those two hours. Her movie was hyped up so much, and we were told that this character was essential for Endgame and we had to see this movie. And yes, she did destroy the ship, which was important, but you would think that she would have more to do in the actual plot. I would have thought she'd go back in time with them and actually be a part of collecting the stones, but she spent most of the movie off-world, which doesn't do much for the audience. It's kind of ironic that they built up Captain Marvel's movie so much, when she ultimately didn't have much bearing on the plot. Ant-Man and the Wasp ended up being way more relevant in comparison. Recently, we started reading one of her current comic book runs, specifically to prepare for her movie in Endgame, only for the comic book to not be very good and her movie to not be very relevant in the end. But that's just our opinion. What do you guys think? Do you think the movie managed to live up to the hype? Was it a good end to this arc of the MCU? And what do you think for the MCU 
moving forward. Just to let everybody know, we have a Twitter. We're not super active on Twitter, but we thought it might be good to have. So if you're interested, you can go over there and follow us. We'll leave a link in the description. Thanks for watching everyone, we really appreciate it. If you like this video, consider subscribing to our channel to see more content from us, or leave a like, and we'll see you all next time. Bye everyone! Bye guys!